medical examination is very important, especially when assessing different diseases from a patient with a chief complaint of chest pain, shortness of breath, wheezing, cough, and lung disease. Eliciting patients' concerns through history taking will prepare you for a productive and efficient examination. Step 1. Introduce yourself to the patient and ask outside. Good day, sir. I am Tessa Priela, a fourth year medical student. Can I know your name and date of birth? I'm Dave Priela, December 6, 1989. Nice to meet you. I've been assigned to examine your chest. This examination will involve looking from the end of the bed. At some part of the exam, I will be touching you. Is that fine with you? Yes, ma'am. Please let me know if you feel any discomfort during the exam so we can stop. Okay. Is it okay if you remove your shirt? Sure. Step 2. Brief survey of the patient's thorax and respiration. Shape of the chest and how it moves. Thorax asymmetry. Bony deformities. Rate, rhythm, depth, and effort of breathing. Number of breaths per minute. Lack of retraction of the accessory muscles. Step 3. Examination of the posterior thorax through inspection. Standing in a midline position behind the patient, know the shape of the chest and how the chest moves, and include the following. Deformities or asymmetry, abnormal muscle retraction of the intercostal spaces, impaired respiratory movement. Tell me if any of the exam hurts or makes you uncomfortable. Okay. I will start touching you now. Palpation. As you palpate the chest, identify tender areas by carefully palpating any area where the patient reports pain or has visible lesions or bruises. Assess any skin abnormalities such as masses or sinus tracts. Now, I will be checking your chest expansion. Please inhale and exhale deeply. Test chest expansion. Place your thumbs at about the level of the tent ribs with your fingers loosely grasping and parallel to the lateral rib cage. As you position your hands, slide them medium, just enough to raise a loose fold of skin between your thumbs over the spine. Ask the patient to inhale deeply. Watch the distance between your thumbs as they move apart during inspiration and feel for the radiant symmetry of the rib cage as it expands and contracts. This movement is sometimes called long excursion. I will now examine your tactile fermentus to check the air density within your lungs. Can you put your right hand to the left shoulder and vice versa? I'm going to press my hands on your back and I want you to say 99 whenever I touch you. Sure. 99 99 99 99 I will be broadcasting your back to listen for intensity, pitch, and duration. If it makes you uncomfortable, please let me know. Okay. Percussion Percussion is one of the most important techniques of physical examination. Percussion sets the chest wall and underlying tissues in motion, producing audible sound and palpable vibrations. Percussion helps you establish whether the underlying tissues are air-filled, fluid-filled, or consolidated. Percuss one side of the chest and then the other at each level in a ladder-like manner. Please breathe out so I can identify the lower level of diaphragms. Identify the descent of the diaphragm or diaphragmatic excursion. First, determine the level of diaphragmatic dullness during quiet respiration. Holding the pleximeter finger above and parallel to the expected level of dullness, percuss downward in progressive steps until dullness clearly replaces resonance. Confirm this level of change by percussing downward from adjacent areas, both medially and laterally. Please inhale deeply so I can measure the descent of your diaphragms. Would you please cough at least twice to clear some airway mucus? Sure. <coughs> Ascultation. Ascultation is the most important 
examination technique for assessing airflow through the tracheal propellant tree. Auscultation involves listening to the sounds generated by breathing, listening for any adventitious sounds, and if abnormalities are suspected, listening to the sounds of the patient's spoken word or whispered voice as they are transmitted through the chest wall. I will check for a gophony. Please say E whenever the stethoscope touches your back. Okay. E. 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 Ask the patient to say E. You will normally hear a muffled long E sound. If E sounded A, it is called egophony. I will check for bronchophony. Please say 99 whenever the stethoscope touches your back. Okay. 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99. Ask the patient to say 99. Normally, the sounds transmitted through the chest wall are muffled and indistinct. Louder voice sounds are called bronchophony. I will check for whispered ventriloquy. Please whisper 1, 2, 3 whenever the stethoscope touches your back. Okay. patient to whisper 99 or 1, 2, 3. The whispered voice is normally heard faintly and indistinctly. But if the whispered voice is heard clearly, it is called whispered ventriloquy. Sir, we're now going to examine your anterior chest. Would you please lie down so we can proceed? Okay. Can you breathe well? Yes. Please let me know if you feel any discomfort during any of the procedures. Sure. It's action. Observe the shape of the patient's chest and the movement of the chest. No for deformities or asymmetry of the thorax, abnormal retraction of the lower intercostal spaces during inspiration, or any supraclavicular retraction. No for lung or impairment in respiratory movement. On patient, complete the anterior chest wound for the following purposes identification of tender areas, assessment of bruising. Size traps or other skin changes. Sir, I will need to touch your chest to examine your chest expansion. Assessment of chest expansion. Place your thumbs along each costal margin, your hands along the lateral ribcage. As you position your hands, slide them medially to a bit, raise loose skin folds between your thumbs. Ask the patient to inhale deeply. Observe how far your thumbs diverge as the thorax expands, and feel for the extent and symmetry of respiratory movement. I will now examine your tactile fremitus to check the air and density within your lungs. I'm going to press my hands on your chest and I want you to say 99 whenever I touch you. Okay. 99 99 99 99 Percuss the anterior and lateral chest, again comparing both sides. The heart normally produces an area of dullness to the left of the sternum from the third to the fifth interspaces. Sir, please inhale, exhale whenever the stethoscope touches your chest. Auscultation. Listen to the chest anteriorly and laterally as the patient breathes with mouth open and somewhat more deeply than normal. Compare symmetric areas of the lungs using the pattern suggested for percussion and extending it to the adjacent areas if indicated. Listen to the breath sounds 
noting their intensity and identifying any variations from normal vesicular breathing. Breath sounds are normally louder in the upper anterior lung fields. Please say, 99, whenever the stethoscope touches your chest. Okay. 99 Normally, the sounds transmitted through the chest wall are muffled and indistinct. Louder voice sounds are called bronchophony. Thank you, sir, for your cooperation. We have completed the chest physical examination. Welcome. Step 5. Recording findings. Thorax is symmetric with good expansion. Lungs resonant. Breath sounds vesicular. No bronchioles, wheezes, or wrong kind. Diaphragms descend 4 cm bilaterally. 